I'm very interested why we perceive the world. So I'm interested in perception. So why is it when we open our eyes that we, uh, that we have all those impressions coming in? And I would tell you uh, that it's a big mystery for me why you can have the same physical input but you can see two different things and each time you are completely convinced that this is what the reality is. So I'm interested in the brain processes which underlie um, those different per percepts, your different su subjective impressions of the world, also the physical input remains the same. And I do want to understand which areas are involved in that. And I do want to understand which brain circuits are really necessary. Melanie Wilkes is working in monkeys and uh, looking at neural qualities of consciousness in monkeys. The monkey research is really very nice because you can actually use a lot of different techniques you cannot do in humans. And for example, the a reversible um, inhibition of different cortical areas that she's doing and then recording the effects in behavior and then the change in brain activity using functional MRI. This is a very powerful tool to better dissect the mechanisms of um, different pathologies such as neglect and then the functions of different brain areas. With the monkeys, I think the most exciting day is when, when you sit there and you listen to the cells and you do your stimulus and before the monkey responds, you actually know from the sound of the cells whether the monkey perceives the stimulus or not. So I think that, that gives you a feeling that you are sort of getting close to, to understanding at least. Yeah. So that, I think that that's the most exciting. So I'm trying to compare brain activity when you're completely unconscious versus when you're conscious, which can seem to be the simplest problem ever, but that's already quite difficult to solve, right? So I'm starting with the extremes of consciousness, completely unconscious, conscious, and then try to find a common mechanism to them, okay? So the difference that we see when uh, people are unconscious as compared to normal uh, wakefulness is that when you stimulate with that magnetic stimulation, um, instead of spreading all around the brain, the activity stays very local. So there is a loss of brain communication uh, and brain connectivity. And then the second thing we see is that during wakefulness, if you do this kind of simulation, the activity will be uh, very complex. It will like, go in one part of the brain and the other travel all around, long lasting, you know, a lot of characteristics of being complex and long lasting. And during anesthesia or sleep or coma, the activity will be very local. It won't travel into the brain. We still don't know what is the link between brain activity and consciousness. We don't have any consensus of that. So, and that's very interesting and I'm very happy to be able to work on such a fascinating subject.